So guys, welcome to another video. Um, I've been receiving a lot of feedback actually in the past few days from e-commerce owners that are looking at my videos, that are watching the videos and getting value from them, but they want to know how they can really apply uh, the LTV to CAC ratio, everything that I'm talking about at the most fundamental level and that they can see the benefits from what I'm preaching in just a few days, right? Or in the short term. So what I've been working on is a video to really show you exactly what the LTV to CAC is, right? At a fundamental level and show you how you can benefit from three tips that I've included at the end of the video that are gonna show you how to scale your brand, which metrics are gonna benefit from it and what time frame you should be looking at in terms of getting the results. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and I'll see you on the next one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, what I wanted to do in this video is really pull back the curtains and take you behind what is the LTV to CAC ratio, which is one of the premises and our main thesis here at Ogrel Labs is to really change the beliefs that a lot of e-commerce brands have of chasing ROAS versus really optimizing their brand or their store in a way that really affects them long-term in a really, really positive way, right? Which is essentially the LTV to CAC ratio model, not the ROAS model, okay? If you've ever seen me, uh, you know, talk on YouTube or, you know, you've watched a video or you've interacted with me in any shape or form, you know that I'm super, super big on destroying ROAS, right? And really, uh, you know, incentivizing brands, like I said in the beginning, uh, to think about this ratio here when it comes to scaling the brand, right? Essentially, what I wanted to do is really explain to you what the LTV to CAC is, why the logic behind it is flawless and why the ROAS logic is basically fundamentally flawed and can lead to the destruction of your business through not generating enough profits. So essentially what the LTV is, is a metric that is made up of three sub metrics that we call the AOV, which is the average order value. Obviously you guys notice the purchase frequency, which is the amount people actually come back and buy from you and the estimated customer lifespan, which is essentially how many years does the average customer stay with you? Is it one year? Is it two years? Is it three years? Is it five years? You know, a lot of these metrics can be, uh, you know, based on historical data, but a lot of you guys will have their store for, you know, just, you know, um, one year and a half, two years. You can't really estimate accurately what these two numbers will be. But you can take a look at benchmarks from the industry, from, you know, brands that are in the same vertical as you, and you can uh, kind of estimate uh, a rough uh, number. Okay. So once you have that number here, the LTV, you need to understand, okay, why is it important that I maximize it? Right. And what I'd like to do is share with you two scenarios. The first one is a brand that really focuses on ROAS and is biased towards maximizing that value, which is essentially a very short term uh, approach. And you can see it here. If we take a look at here at these time spectrum from day one to day 100, essentially what a brand that focuses on ROAS does is they focus on lowering their costs or kind of maximizing their ROAS and making sure that the customer purchases as much as possible on the first purchase right? That, that's their obsession. That's their bias. Okay. That's not a good thing because the only thing that comes out of it is limiting the scope of your marketing, right? Because it is, it is so, so, so short term that you don't even have time to focus on what's going on after the first purchase has been made, right? And a lot of customers or a lot of clients that we speak with don't know what goes on after the first sale. They don't know how their marketing is structured. They don't have a holistic strategy when it comes to bringing people back to their brand and maximizing the value they extract from them. Okay. So this is very, very important because you might actually be profitable on the, on the front end, which is uh, a ROAS of 2.5. I think most brands that are properly structured with a good AOV, a good product, good profit margins will be happy with a 2.5 X ROAS as a blended ROAS. Okay. But what happens is after the, um, you know, the first sale happens, you have no control of what happens within your brand, right? No control over your sales process, no control over your marketing. So you might actually be overspending on some of these sales that come afterwards, right? Because you don't have any control over them, right? So it will basically lead to entropy kicking in and destroying the system that you built. Right. And so on average, if you take a look at the big picture, you might actually be losing money, right? Not maximizing how much people actually purchase after they came the first time, right? You have no customer loyalty and you can't make sense of your numbers because you're not tracking them. You're not tracking past the ROAS, which is how much can people uh, buy from me right now, right? That's like the analogy uh, that kind of perfectly describes what's going on is you're always chasing the next sale. You're always spinning your wheels, chasing the next sale, making sure that you're always spending, always spending, spending, spending to acquire as many customers as possible. After you acquire them, there's nothing. Poof, your marketing disappears, right? And so what I'd like you to do is actually start to model 
what we call the uh, brands that are actually killing it in the game. And this is exactly how they do it, right? The only focus they have is how can we maximize the value that we're extracting from our customers on the long term? right? We don't focus on ROAS. We might actually be unprofitable on the front end, but we know for certain that we are going to be profitable once, uh, you know, the, the dust settles, right? And so what happens is this, instead of focusing on ROAS, these brands focus on their customer acquisition cost, which is one of the only metrics when it comes to ads that you have total control over, right? Because if you dissect it, and there's a YouTube video that I made about this, you can know what this metric is made up of, and you can actually tend to lower it or stabilize it. So what we typically see for basically our clients that are performing the best and brands that are performing the best in the e-commerce space as a whole is their CAC is usually very, very, very stable on every single platform because that's a metric that they track. And whatever you track, whatever you measure can be optimized, okay? And so what happens here is when you increase the scope of your marketing, you're actually biased towards maximizing the experience your customer has through email marketing, SMS marketing, making sure the uh, you know customers come back, making sure you have amazing cross sales and upsells, amazing offers that maximize the dollar amount that the customer is willing to spend with you. With that, you're increasing the customer confidence because as much as your customers spend with you, as much your um, you know customer confidence will go up right? Because that's essentially what makes up the LTV is real confidence to the customer that their money is well spent with you, right? And this is essentially what we're doing here. We're maximizing our LTV, right? So instead of being a $50 LTV, here we have $173 in LTV, right? And in terms of the CAC, you're actually spending 48 bucks to acquire that customer, right? Over their entire lifespan, right? And that gives you an LTV to CAC ratio of 3.6, which makes it super, super attractive. Let's say if you want to raise money, you want to sell your business, you want to exit, you want to, uh, you know, have an investor come in, whatever the case may be, if you have this metric within that realm, which is above a three and below a five are in a very, very, very good spot, right? Because that is basically the only sign that tells an investor and outside actor that your business is super healthy. It's not your ROAS, it's not how many customers you acquire. Basically the LTV to CAC ratio, which is how much you extract from your customers divided by your customer acquisition cost, right? So I really want to incentivize you to start thinking within this framework because that will literally change the face of your business. I'm not even kidding. If you start stabilizing your CAC and increasing the amount your customers spend with you, you will be so profitable, it's not even funny, right? And you'll your life will be so, so much easier. It's It's really, really that different. Now, what I wanted to do is really focus on showing you um, kind of in a, on a philosophical uh, you know, standpoint why it is necessary to switch from the ROAS thinking to an LTV to CAC thinking. This is the realm where uh, most e-commerce brands operate in. Okay. Now, what happens here is the value that you're extracting from your customers is always super, super close to the cost you pay to acquire those customers right? So you don't have much room for error. You see the area under the curve here is super, super, super thin, which obviously this illustrates your free cash flow, right? How much money you have after your cost to actually uh, invest in your brand, invest in your product, invest in R&D, invest in hiring, invest in a better office and a better you know, warehouse, whatever the case may be, right? This is where most brands operate in. It's a very, very stressful place to be in, right? Because you don't have room for error, right? Whereas if you start operating within the LTV to CAC ratio, this is what happens, right? The value that you're extracting from your customers keeps on going up and up and up. If obviously granted your product is awesome, right? And you have great branding it comes to lowering your CAC uh, and maximizing the value that you're creating from your customers. It only keeps on going up and up and up. Whereas your cost right to acquire their customers are very very stable or they marginally go up to cost increasing um you know platforms charging more that that can obviously happen costs of ads are only going up marginally increasing your customer acquisition cost and it's not a volatile metric because you track it right and this is the free cash flow that you have right this is basically what i call freedom because that's freedom to invest in your product to invest in your office to invest in your warehouse to invest in your team to invest in training to invest in anything that will improve your business and drive the needle forward for you. And that is essentially why I scream to the top of my lungs that LTV to CAC ratio is the only way to scale a brand long term in 2023 and going forward is by really abandoning the idea that you need to spend your way to success, right? You just need to build the proper infrastructure. These videos that I make is really to incentivize you to start thinking this way.
right? And to really give you freedom within your brand, okay? So how do you actually do it, right? How do you actually develop, uh, you know, an LTV to CAC ratio framework that actually drives profits to your brand and gives you long-term sustainability? The first thing you want to do is develop unicorn offers that are profitable, right? When I say you want to develop unicorn offers that are profitable, I'm talking about offers that will make your customers think that they're stupid if they don't take you on your offers, okay? Make sure that you model these offers, right? Whenever you start thinking about running an offer, you wanna know exactly what your break-even points are, your CAC, um, your CAC break-even, your ROAS break-even, all of those metrics, you need to model them exactly because you need to know how much you can afford to spend in the long term to acquire a customer based on not only the LTV, but how much you can actually make on the front end, right? And it could be a choice of yours to not make any profit on the front end because your strategy is to extract more value on the back end that will maximize the LTV more than if you had focused on extracting profit from the first sale, if that makes sense. Or your strategy could be to extract as much uh, value as you can from the first sale and then incrementally increase the amount your customers spend over uh, the next few months or the next few years with you, right? That could be another strategy, right? But you really want to develop unicorn offers that are profitable, right? You need to be making profit with your brand and you need to know that you're going to be making profit on average. And that's by knowing your customers, okay? Number two is to focus on what we call leverage retention marketing, not the BS retention marketing that a lot of brands are uh, you know, leveraging today. It really is leverage retention marketing because it serves a purpose hand in hand with the strategies you've developed to scale your brand with the LTV to CAC ratio, right? You need to be able to bring back customers to your brand and you need a powerful framework to do that, right? We're not just talking about beautiful designs, beautiful branding and stuff like that. It's really a leverage retention marketing framework that brings people back to spend more, right? And that is exactly what you want to do. And then lastly, what you want to do is you want to optimize your ads for CAC and not ROAS. I don't want to hear about people optimizing for ROAS anymore because that is the surefire way to destroy your brand long-term because you're not going to be profitable, right? The only thing you need to focus on when it comes to spending on ads is making sure you're not overspending by optimizing your CAC. So let's, let's say after all costs except marketing, you're left with 20 bucks or 30 bucks, let's say 30 bucks and you wanna be extracting $10 in your pocket. You wanna be making $10 on every single sale, right? Well, that leaves you with a $20 budget to play with, right? That is the maximum amount you can spend to acquire a customer because after that, you won't be making the $10 in your pocket, right? So you really want to model your offers, and this is exactly what we help you do, is to develop unicorn offers, but model them in a way that you're profitable. So then when you know that 20 bucks is the ultimate amount that you can spend on ads, you know this number should never exceed $20 on Facebook, for example, on Google, whatever the case may be, right? So you're always optimizing it. Sometimes it might be 21, sometimes it might be 15, sometimes it might be 12, but you're always hovering around that $20 and it gives you a sense of confidence that you're actually doing your job correctly, right? Because you have a number that is constant that you know will never change for the current offer that you're running, right? And so what happens is number one will give you an increase in AOV, right? Because you're modeling offers for profit, right? So you're increasing, you're incentivized to increase the amount customers purchase from you, right? Second, your LTV and customer loyalty is going up because you're applying leverage retention marketing, right? So your customer loyalty is increasing because they uh, have more confidence in spending with you and your LTV increases because obviously they are spending more with you. And then third and last, because you're following our framework of lowering your CAC or stabilizing your CAC, well, obviously it's going to lower your customer acquisition costs. It's going to lower your costs overall, and you're going to be making more profit. And this is a very, very simplistic view, but it's essentially how we've been able to deliver amazing results for our customers through our LTV to CAC model. It's because we focus on giving them freedom right? We never, never, never want to be operating within this realm. We always want to be operating within this, um, you know, this framework, right? This is essentially how you invest in your business, how you invest in a better team, how you invest in better infrastructure and how you basically get paid more because ultimately, especially in entrepreneurship, it gets forgotten a lot, but the founder needs to get paid. And this is exactly how you can maximize the amount you're extracting from your business, making it an asset for you instead of a liability, right? Here, it's a liability. All right. It's stressful. You're not making as much money as you'd like to. Um, you know, it's not fun. It's very stressful. It's very tiring, et cetera, et cetera. Here is where you get freedom. So hope this was useful, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you need any help with this. I'd be super, super happy to walk you through, um, you know, our framework, educate you on this and make sure that you're applying it for your business because as many brands applying this framework and scaling past their wallet stream this year, 
because we've done it time and time again with our clients and it works. Always be in a position to extract as much as possible from your business. So hope this was useful to you. Let me know what you think and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.